Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I'm Nagu Rangan. I'm the product marketing manager uh, for Microsoft Azure, Azure Media Services, and Azure CDN. With me, I have Mark Stevens from Oceaneering. Um, we're very excited to be here to talk about building a digital media solution for your organization. So. Just to kick us off, uh, which industry or vertical do you think should care about media? Right, let's just take an audience poll. <laughs> Great, this is a fantastic audience, so my job is easy. <laughs> um, typically, when I ask this question, I'll hear broadcasters, TV networks, sports stations, and so on. But the reality is everybody can benefit from videos and media, right? Uh, let's just go through some data points on like, how videos can help you. Let's say you're building a web or a mobile app. Um, if you include videos in it, your uh, site traffic goes up by about 157%. Uh, that's, from an, uh, that's from a study that we did. Um, the site time that people spend on the site goes up by 105%. And if you have a digital marketing solution or an e-commerce page, uh, the conversion improves by 2x. So these are all phenomenal results uh, that goes show the power of videos. And not only that, in say, a regular use cases such as a, a real estate rental uh, listing, uh, you see a 403% increase in inquiries, uh, increase in inquiries uh, for pages that have videos. 75% of executives who, um, who were polled in a survey uh, said that they watch work-related videos almost once a week. And we've all heard about uh, this adage that uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, but turns out the video, a minute of video, is worth 1.8 million words, right? So videos, the summary is a very powerful way of consuming information uh, and also increasing engagement. So if you just look at the opportunity, uh, of course, we all are familiar with the digital disruption of the media and entertainment industry. We've seen Netflix, Hulu, and so on. But video is increasingly becoming part of everyday business. Uh, and there's growing opportunities to extract intelligence uh, from media. and then. Uh, we talked about it earlier, uh, digital video actually boosts uh, engagement in your apps. So we're going to spend our time this afternoon uh, talking about three main pillars. Uh, so first one is to uh, connect and engage with your audience uh, with videos and doing this uh, across multiple devices, right? Um, desktop, mobile, tablet, and so on. Uh, second one is uh, extracting intelligence from your videos. And uh, we'll have a very interesting case study from Oceaneering, where they're using some of our uh, media analytics capabilities uh, to process videos. The third one is the benefits of building on PaaS and Azure, and how you can accelerate your solutions um, to market. So let's kick off um, with a case study from ClickView. Right? So ClickView is a, a startup in Australia. They build solutions for um, schools. And what they've built is a learning management solution that includes videos. Um, and so the use case is teachers, let's say they're talking about, say, the Roman Empire. They will roll a video that is about two or three minutes long. And they've seen that that sparks the interest in students and like, boosts the engagement in the classroom um, pretty significantly. And uh, so ClickView has been very successful with this model. And they've now actually extended their platform to include live streaming of some of the sports activities that happen in school. Right? So even if parents can be at school to uh, watch their kids' uh, soccer tournament or something, they can view it on their mobile device or on the desktop, whether they're on the go or um, you know, in the office. Right? Uh, it's a very convenient way for them to still be engaged with their kids' activities, even if they are not there in person. And uh, ClickView has been very successful with these models, and they're extending it to 
uh, the UK from uh, this year. The other use case that we see is kind of enterprise video portal. So Marks and Spencer is using it to showcase uh, some of their new products and train their uh, employees on it. Uh, we all saw kind of the live streams of the Ignite uh, keynotes. Um, so industry events or keynotes, presentations that can be live streamed to an audience uh, that'll help you broaden the reach is another use case. Uh, we've seen another interesting use case with say medical conferences. Uh, we did a uh, live streaming of uh, this event called Worldwide Robotic Surgery where uh, robotic surgery was uh, being done in uh, Sweden and we were able to live stream it to audiences across the world. So medical students dialed in and they were able to uh, learn uh, from this uh, surgery that was done in Sweden uh, and participate in it live. And it's, it kind of speaks to the power of being able to uh, get, address a large audience uh, in a live format. Uh, Another one that I wanted to cover is Democratic National Convention. They use uh, Azure Media Services and Microsoft um, to live stream their uh, convention. And so this talks about kind of the use case where even though you might have a public um, portal such as YouTube that's available to live stream, it still is very, very helpful to have a very curated environment where you can kind of control the experience of your audience. Uh, and that's what uh, Microsoft helped uh, the Democratic National Con Convention with. And of course we have the traditional use case which is the sports broadcaster. We've done events like uh, Super Bowl, FIFA World Cup, uh, NASCAR and the Olympic Games. Um, so recently we, in March, we did the live streaming of the Batman versus Super Superman red carpet event. And uh, this gives you kind of a, a perspective on how you can engage with your external audience, right? Uh, so if you're launching a new marketing campaign or something of that sort, uh, you could um, really boost engagement with some sort of live streaming support there. Uh, I'm not going to do the live streaming demo here, uh, just to, in the interest of time. Uh, we'll have some really cool demos to cover with Oceaneering, so I just want to make time for that. But you might be wondering uh, how much does it cost to do, uh, say, a live streaming or video on demand, right? What if I told you it's just about a uh, dollar an hour and you can get started in uh, about five minutes, right? Uh, so this speaks to the power of the platform that we've built. Uh, and if you compare this to, say, what Oprah Winfrey had to do uh, to stand up her um, live video channel, she ended up spending about, I think, $1.5 million. So, um, and so with Azure, you can build your own audience and uh, have your live streaming capability for a lot less. Uh, so let's switch gears and talk about um, extracting uh, intelligence from your videos through some of the advanced uh, machine learning powered capabilities. So we have a core set of features um, that we've built. One is speech to text that will automatically pull a transcript of all of the audio that is there in a video. Uh, Hyperlabs, which is a, a stabilization uh, feature. Motion detection, the ability to detect motion in a video. And then face and emotion recognition and detection. Um, video summarization, so if you have a long form content, uh, say a 45 minute talk, you can just automatically generate a 30 minute, uh, 30 second uh, trailer of it. And then we have uh, optical character recognition. So let's say uh, the Ignite talk was streamed. Um, uh, you could automatically pull out all of the content that's there in this uh, video in the form of printed text and have it available as metadata. Uh, we're adding content moderation, redaction, uh, and several new features uh, soon. So let's uh, have Oceaneering uh, talk about uh, how they're using Azure Media Analytics. Okay. 
Good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Mark Stevens. I'm a director of global data solutions for Oceaneering, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a solution we've rolled out for our clients recently. And we're seeing a big uptick of uh, being able to utilize the video analytics on the Azure platform. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of some of the, the live streams we have. So Oceaneering, we're a big engineering company that nobody ever hears about. Uh, but we actually, a lot of our clients that I work with currently is Tesla, NASA, Disney, Universal, BP, Shell. Being Oceaneering, not Landoneering, everybody thinks we do a lot of ocean work. But uh, how many of y'all remember the BP oil spill? How many of y'all remember seeing the video on there? All right, well, that was what we did. <laughs> that was all the video streaming and the telemetry, and I'll show you some examples of that continuing. But the transition that we're seeing with, uh, for our system is for Oceaneering is moving a lot towards not just real-time streaming, uh, but moving into recorded media, and now recorded media analytics. So in our group actually came out of the, uh, after the BP oil spill, we actually, our group was initially on the IT side. So we ran all the communications and infrastructure and all the video during that operation. And now my group's commercial with a focus on video and telemetry. And this is where the Azure platform uh, really helps us because a lot of clients are having storage issues now. So we stream a lot of live video from, we typically have 100 to 200 live streams going at any one time from operations, and the transition we're seeing is moving towards what do we now do with all that video you've generated? So, and then how they transport the video from offshore, I would say 90% of the streams I'm sending right now are over low bandwidth, 50K satellite, or 50K of bandwidth over satellite, high latency. And then as they get the data, a third part of our group is around asset and data management, specifically around asset performance management. So what do they do with the video uh, and what can they do to analyze erosion and corrosion and operational data? And this is where machine vision is becoming a, a key component of our, our portfolio. So what is OMV? So OMV actually came to us from a client who had an issue. And what it is, is it's called the Oceaneering Media Vault. And it's built on the Azure platform. It was actually built uh, in October very rapidly. It was uh, eight weeks from the client initiation of the problem to roll out to production. And uh, it is really, it's grown into beyond just the media data. It's actually media, 3D models. It's images, JPEGs, PDFs, and a you know, very simple search engine so clients can search through it. It does utilize an enhanced search engine, but what we're doing with the media that as it gets uploaded is we apply all of these services against it. And now we're beginning to apply the analytics like the speech to text and the OCR. And the platform, it uses the image and analytics because 95% of the data we get has no, has no metadata to it. It's just a video file that's been collected from a customer. It's sitting in a NAS drive under their desk. It's not stored usually in a, in the IT servers because IT doesn't want to store all that video. And so being able to run these services against the video allows us to extract data that then helps feed the search engine so the clients can find their content. So what is an ROV? So when we, a lot of people don't know what an ROV is. If you, if you remember the BP spill, it was very prevalent, but it's a very large robot. And Oceaneering, from a robotic standpoint, we now operate the drones, we operate an ASV, which is a robot ship, we have the ROV subsurface, and we just recently started operating an AUV, uh, which is an autonomous, looks like a giant torpedo. So all of these things are sensor collection platforms as we collect data. And for Oceaneering, it's a camera platform most of the time because you're operating 6,000 to 8,000 feet beneath the ocean. We have to transmit high definition 4K video and 3D video for the different clients. And then, especially with the oil market down right now, we're seeing a lot of clients displacing personnel off the boat. So we have to stream the operations into a command center. So this is becoming very, fairly common. And it's a large asset. If you remember the Scooby-Doo van from the 60s and 70s, it's, it's a very large asset. And we operate 330 of these worldwide. And we actually have a high-speed connection to the subsurface to transmit all that high-speed video or high-quality video data. It actually has a 10-gig connection from the seafloor up to the vessel. So right now, the, the big problem we've had for the client uh, the original problem that started it was they came to us with 15 terabytes of video data that they needed to store. And what is it, what it, this was in October of 2015. And as of today, we actually are at 380 terabytes. So 15 to 380, kind of imagine that was kind of a different requirement. And what we found, and this is happening with other clients, is they, they don't realize how much data they have. 
At typical scenarios, we go out with an ROV, we create an inspection, and we, we compile all of this HD video, and we give it to the client with a NAS drive or a USB or DVDs. What they do with that media is they then take it to their office, they give it to IT and say, here, store this on the server. So we've kind of taken the model further now with OMV to go in and build a solution for them to ingest that video data, but then also provide a search analytics for it. And where this is applicable is if you have a pipeline or you have a subsea structure that's been out there for 10 years, you want to be able to compare a particular segment of that video year over year over year to look for erosion, corrosion, uh, a lot of damage, especially like if hurricanes come through the area that drag an anchor through the seafloor. Uh, you can imagine the damage that that can incur. So, and it was a rapid design. I mean, my, the first two developers, or my main developer who worked on it hadn't even worked in Azure yet. So really, of eight weeks, he actually built it into about six weeks. So that just shows you the power of being able to flip a project or, uh, like this around quickly. And now what a lot of clients are asking us to do is just SaaS this. So we, just, we do a day rate service for a lot of clients. They give us the media data, and then we brand it particular to their, uh, to their portal. Mark, can we see a demo of this? Yeah, absolutely. I'll go ahead and show you some real data. <laughs> All right. So I'll start off with some real-time video just to give you an idea of some of the feeds that we're monitoring worldwide. And this is, a, I call this the Brady Bunch view. So this is actually, and I'm not queuing these assets up, so I usually don't know what's coming on here. So right now, this is a six ROVs and a deck floor cam around the world. All of these are streaming over satellite links. Uh, these ROVs, this one's at um, 6,000 feet, he's at 5,900, that's at 6,000 feet there, 6,800 feet beneath the ocean. All of these have a latency delay of less than two seconds. Uh, we also do a lot of drone video for the US Navy and, and various clients, uh, even offshore now, and the push now is to get that latency less than a second. So this is where we have to roll out additional communications protocols to get that latency down, because satellite, you're still limited by speed of light to get that just under a second. Actually, you can see some personnel working on that vessel up there. So the nice thing with the video analytics now is that we can go in and apply analytics to the stream video data and the recorded data. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you some of the technologies that we've built into OMV for the clients. This is the dashboard for OMV. So it allows a client to go in and search. Uh, right now, they have 103,000 videos that have been uploaded since January. And we're processing about 10,000 a week right now of new video being ingested into the system. So as each video gets loaded in, we actually load the OCR, we do speech to text, we do uh, the object detection. Uh, all of these analytics are being brought in so now that they can search for the video. So if you're the client now, you can say, show me all the video in Angola. And what we do is we create this uh, breadcrumb uh, filter here. Show me all the video in 2012. Show me all the video for buoy tanks. So instantly, I've filtered down through 100,000 videos, and this allows them to go ahead and play the inspection. So if they go and load up a playlist, it starts playing the actual media content of the inspection. And we actually encode it a low bandwidth and a high bandwidth version. While they're streaming the video, we actually provide a DVR function that records the video into the platform. And as, because we have so much video generated on the rig, we actually have to sneaker net and physically carry the video back onto shore. And this actually goes and replaces the uh, low bandwidth data. And what we've done for personnel who aren't used to searching for media data in a, in a search context, we actually give them a traditional folder view. So what we've done in this is we've allowed them a, a function to drill down into the data. So here I'm drilling down into West Africa data. And this allows you to see all of the inspection files as they get loaded in. We've also built a widget tool. Uh, this is uh, actually Esri just announced uh, announcement this week that, that they're the, pretty much the geospatial platform in support of the Azure environment. And we work very closely with the Esri team. And the nice thing is the video comes in, or I say it's a bad thing. Usually the video comes in, has no geospatial reference. So what we've done is we go in and we tie all the vessel history. We use the, the eastings and northings off the video and we create a geopositional coordinate to put in with the video. The nice thing about that is now with this video widget, the user can go in and say, uh, this is up at the Shetland, Shetland Islands, north of uh, UK, and show me all of the video in this one region here. So I'll go in and just draw a little circle there. What it does is it goes out and searches the OMV library for this geospatial content, and it'll actually show all of the video data in that area. 
Now what we're doing is every video has a spot on the map. We're actually gonna go in and look at frame by frame where all of this video is. So actually you can see the found video up here in this upper right quadrant. And you can imagine if you're doing a pipeline survey, there's tens of thousands of videos that come up in an area. So this allows the client to quickly look at all the pipeline data, all the media data, and if they click on it, they actually get a tool set that will actually load what's called a multi-viewer. So it'll actually time sync the video uh, as they're playing it. So here you can see three videos loaded up and we actually time sync all three of them off the ROV because some of them have three cameras. All of this is done cloud-based. And this is a tool set we've actually loaded in the browser so you, you don't require a client anymore. If there's metadata files or other telemetry that come in, we have these viewer that gets loaded up into the system. And the Media Vault as a whole, like I said, the, the focus has been moving away not now just from, or not to focus just on video, but the fact that it's other media content. It's gonna be, it's uh, PDFs, it's telemetry. You can look in the upper left corner there the data, the documents, because this is an easy search platform for them and they can organize it and store it on the cloud. And what we've done from a SaaS model is just provided the customer a flat rate. You can watch live streams, you can watch recorded data, and we sell it in either 100 or 500 terabyte chunks of data. And we expect to have over a petabyte of data going into this this year from a single client. And uh, we're seeing a big adoption from uh, a lot of clients to adopt the cloud. Uh, even on the government side, we do a lot of uh, cloud migrations now, and that's usually what they have to do in order to get funding for 2017 is to demonstrate that, they can, uh, that they've looked at a cloud solution. So this is a, the Azure platform makes it fairly easy to roll this out, so. Cool. So let's look at some of the analytics capabilities okay. that you're using. So the analytics, now that we've got the video in there, and like I said, we've got uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of videos come in from the various regions. Speech to text is one of the earlier ones we started to use. As the ROV is doing inspections or the drone is doing an inspection, there's typically an operator who's talking through the video. He'll be saying, all right, I'm flying over pipeline G7. I see an anomaly. I see a break in the pipeline. And what happened in the past is that video got sent on the shore. Somebody has to transcribe and watch four to six hours of video and actually manually write that data in. The speech to text allows us to now transcribe that, that search or the, uh, the text and being supporting multiple languages, because we do do operations around the world, we can instantly transcribe that video as they come in. And this has been the number one biggest hit for the clients. The auto thumbnail generation, going to the, the discussion that video is four to six hours long sometimes, the auto thumbnail generation allows them to rapidly scroll through the video to see the different elements and rapidly preview it. The image stabilization, this is used uh, on the ROVs and it's used on the drone video because the motors are shaking the whole system. By applying the image stabilization first, we actually get better results going back to the OCR, which helps us read the telemetry off the, data, off the video data. We're beginning to get a lot into video object and detection and classification. What we're doing here is using the, uh, the Azure services to be able to spit out color enhancements, product definitions like is it a pipeline, is it a riser, is it a damage point, is it rust, is it corrosion? And we highlight that into the video so the client can see as a marker where those anomalies exist. And then the, the, the final piece is the OCR. We've been running all of the metadata that comes in in the video is traditionally either in a text file, which is still very rare when we receive it, or like in drone or ROV video, you have this overlay. And this is a very rich context of, of metadata here. You actually have heading, eastings, northings, you have cathodic protection readings from all the sensors. In the past, you wouldn't be able to read all this content. But we run the OCR, it extracts the data to the database so we can now go back and search and annotate the video data off of the OCR. So it's a very popular analytical tool we're using for video. So all of these components together are, are capabilities that would have cost hundreds to you know, millions of dollars two years ago, but now that they're services based, you're literally running these for a quarter an hour to run these analytics. So um, I just wanted to touch upon this one a little bit more. Um, so uh, it's not just for say a media vault or something. Uh, you can think about other applications. Say for example, you have a bunch of Ignite videos, right? So let's say you have 80 to 100 videos from Ignite and you wanna uh, figure out when did Satya talk about uh, 
artificial intelligence, right? With speech to text, with OCR, and with face recognition, you can build a really powerful search uh, that can tell you exactly the timestamps and the videos in which Satya talked about artificial intelligence. So that kind of gives you a hint of like the advanced features that you can build. Uh, thank you. And then the nice thing about deploying these type of applications in a browser for us is we're, we're kind of replacing the software mindset of a lot of clients in that what kind of views do you want for an application? W what we do is we go in and say, do you want three views? Do you want a geospatial view? Do you want an image inspection report? By rolling these applications out in a browser, it allows us to quickly modify it and create views based off roles and function and process. And the geospatial search tool is one is a good example where uh, the clients are beginning, we get to see user adherence of which ones do they use the most so we can constantly change the design of the front end. The multi-camera view, this has replaced about four different applications that the client uses now. And every couple of weeks they give us a new request or a feature that gets put into the product roadmap, but our traditional rollout schedule is in weeks as opposed to months and a year for the application enhancements. And then the image inspection report, this is an example where the reports are now generated on the fly out of the database, out of the Azure Media Service. And instead of having to do screen clips and screen grabs of the video, we can auto-generate with that, uh, with the uh, report builder. So I want to close out just, you know, streaming video and now going into recorded video is critical for operations. This is the room I actually stood up very quickly during the operation so we could watch all of the systems coming in. And this is still being used today for different operations. We go in, we stand up operations rooms. This is called the hive. But it shows the criticality of media and video data. And now that we have the Azure platform, which I really would have wished we'd had it back then because I can't tell you how many workstations and DVRs and recorders, as we had over 30 ROVs running at the same time, how much video data that we had to push out. We were also streaming to over 20 million viewers a day. So being able to leverage the CDN content on the Azure would have been a lot easier for us to be able to provide this data for an operational sense, because that is our eyeballs uh, in the under, undersea world. And uh, it's critical to see that over, over operations and, and having these type of dashboards, it's more and more organizations are asking us to use the video to displace personnel offshore. So thanks everyone. So, <laughs> uh, so we talked about kind of the traditional cases uh, of engaging and inspiring your organization with videos, uh, whether it's internal or uh, internal uh, audience or an external audience. Uh, you can do that through video on demand, recorded videos, or live. And then we also um, looked at uh, how you can use some of the advanced machine learning capabilities to extract intelligence uh, from your videos and make it more searchable, easily searchable, uh, and uh, more useful. Right. Now let's uh, talk about um, the benefits of building on Azure. Um, I'll touch upon uh, the benefits of building on PaaS and some of the scale features that you get uh, with, by building on Azure, right? Uh, and how that will help you get your solutions uh, to market faster. So we just wrapped up uh, streaming the um, Olympics. So we did about. 2.7 billion minutes of uh, live streaming uh, over the last uh, 20 or so days uh, for the Olympics, right? Uh, and the cool thing is we didn't have to go out and build a new data center for this. This was all built on top of our existing infrastructure. And that speaks to the strength of the platform in terms of the scale and the size that you can benefit from when you build on Azure. And as you uh, have heard from other um, uh, speeches and so probably the keynote, we have 34 regions, which is more twice the size of AWS, and I think probably uh, more than AWS and Google combined. Um, so by building on Azure, you're benefiting from the enormous scale and the global reach that the platform provides. Some of the benefits of building on PaaS, there's both business benefits and technical benefits, of course, business benefit is you can get your solutions to ma market faster, uh, and there's um, lesser risk in terms of being able to try out your solution on um, a PaaS platform because it's a higher layer of abstraction. 
Now, the technical benefits is there is um, connectivity from on-prem data to uh, the data in the cloud. Uh, we enable that through uh, a variety of services. And uh, you also have all of the monitoring and uh, management capabilities that Azure offers through OMS and Azure Monitoring and so on. Go ahead. You will have to ingest it into the cloud to process it because that's where all of our processing machines are. Right? And uh, Forrester recently completed a, a, a survey. Uh, we did we did an, an uh, sorry assessment of the economic impact of building on uh, on PaaS, right? And they saw that there was 466 percent return on investment on building on PaaS compared to IaaS. And about 80% um, time that was saved on building on pass compared to IS, and 50% faster deployment uh, in terms of time to market. So um, I talked about the pass platform, so I just want to double click and give you an overview of what are those features, right? So if you want to build um, video capabilities, we have end to end uh, functions that will help you do it, right from ingest to transcoding. Uh, to a media player that works across different platforms, uh, to pulling out or extracting insights from it through our uh, media analytics capabilities, uh, content protection, so any sort of encryption that you want to apply to your videos, and then a multi-CDN. We're the only public cloud with a multi-CDN uh, from Verizon and from Akamai, so that gives you a global scale and reach uh, in terms of um, the audience that you can reach. And then uh, if you're building an application, whether it's a web app or a mobile app, we have the uh, um, components to build websites, mobile applications, um, and the ability to build APIs on the fly, integration, I talked about it, so being able to connect your on-prem data to cloud and uh, go back and forth. And then also uh, the ability to uh, have customized uh, notifications from your mobile apps. And we have a growing list of partners that we work with. So you've heard from Oceaneering. I think Southworks is in the room. So you can work with uh, one of them to bring your uh, media solutions uh, to your organization in case you want to partner with someone. All right. So my call to action, uh, check out the Azure Solutions page. Uh, check out Microsoft Stream if you're interested in an enterprise video portal. Uh, try out Azure, uh, you can try it uh, for free, and then also leverage the training resources that we have for Azure. Oops. And don't forget to evaluate uh, our session, your feedback is uh, super important to us. Um, and with that, we'll open it for questions. I think there's mics on the left and right. Yes. We there's haven't no hit limits. one yet. <laughs> yeah, there's no limits. No, it doesn't matter. It depends um, on the playback and how we parse it back together. You can usually concatenate small file sets. You don't typically want a 50 terabyte, you know, like especially dealing with 4K video, you're not going to have a 50 terabyte or 50 gig, 80 gig file. Typically, you'll parse it into segments and you'll concatenate it. Mm hmm. That's common. That actually, the OMV, we actually do that with. We yeah. create a single, like a 720p upload, and we break it into a 360. Uh, and then it'll support the multi stream. It'll be able to support the variable bit rates yeah. for the different system. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the transporting process, is we generate a bunch of bit rates. So we'll be able to stream based on your bandwidth and so on. It's up to you. It's, you yep. can do the client negotiated output, so you can do 50K, 100 up to 4K. That's coming out in the fourth quarter. Uh, so it's scalable to the client base. Or you can set it as a hard code. You can say. 
unlimited file types, but you've got to, you typically convert it into an MP4 format yep. uh, on ingest. Yep. And we get all types, VCDs, MPEGs, AVIs, uh, you know, it's flavor of the month. We've, we've got over 14 formats we've had inbound to us that we've converted over to MP4. Any other questions? Are there any ongoing uh, audio or video royalties that are required? You know, so if you were to have a solution to build your own using Azure? No, no, no royalties. Um, it's just pay as you go. So, what we provide is kind of the infrastructure and the uh, platform for you to build your video solution. So, sure. Any other questions? I'll check back. In. I'll get back to you on that. Please, please reach out. Okay. Yeah. And typically, we're pushing at H.264 and looking at H.265 for yeah. this year for going to the you know even lower bandwidth. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and HVEC. Mm -hmm. We just started, actually, HVEC in yeah. uh, private review. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming.